Uh, coyotes also are, are very common uh, in the residential areas. They come into town, but they don't change their behavior. They still howl. You, and people on the edge of town right out here often say they can hear them howling at night. Uh, and that's their way of communicating. Uh, they're, they're long whiskers. Here's, see these, I know you can't see them there, but these, get a close up of these long whiskers. They're whiskers. Those whiskers are, that's their sense of direction in the dark. They're, they stick way out to the side. If they touch anything, he knows exactly how, what it is, how far away it is, and so forth. So whiskers are very important for just about all animals that have them, cats particularly. Um, the coyote is, is not a native animal here. We used to have a red wolf here, and he, uh, the last one was killed back in 1921. So this was a niche. A niche is a, is a job to do. And uh, so there was no more, no more wolves to eat the, the rabbits and the rats and the mice and the birds and so forth. So it was a, a, an unoccupied niche, wide open. And when, when they moved into the South Georgia from the West, and they came from, actually they came from Mexico, all the way over here. Now, it took probably thousands of years for that to happen, but uh, they, they did, they, they, are, they have adapted well, and they come into town in, 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 at night and eat garbage and trash just like a raccoon does. Um, another fellow that is very common here in South Georgia is a beaver. This is a, the height of a beaver. Beavers are pure herbivores, pure herbivores. They do not eat any meat at all. They, uh, think, think we talked about this yesterday. We talked about beaver quite a bit too. Yeah, yeah I think we did. Uh, now the beaver does, his fur is a waterproof fur. He has a long guard hairs on top but underneath, he has a very thick coat of, of, uh, of, ha of the short, fuzzy hairs. Uh, that's the, is the insulation in the cold water. Beavers use their tail for a number of things. One is a fat storage organ. And that's where they store any excess energy is in their tail. Then they also use the tail to communicate. And, and when they're swimming along at night, anywhere in the, in the swamp, and you hear a sudden slap on the water, you know that a beaver has been scared and died. He got something, something alerted him, so he, he dove, but before they dive, they tell everybody else, hey, there's something, something up here, don't come out. <laughs> Um, they, uh, they, they often flood a forest. When they build a dam, they flood a forest. Ultimately, I've watched this happen. I watched a beaver dam for about eight years. And he, uh, as it, as it water, water rose about three feet in the, in the pond, and it was a big pond, maybe three, four, five acres uh, that he created and all the trees died. So it, when the trees die and fall to the bottom, they become part of the environment, uh, but it doesn't do anything for the appearance of the forest. And the people who have uh, money tied up in those trees, 